Today, we're gonna list the top 10 best accessories that came with the Star Wars vintage action figures. Welcome back to the journey. Now, a friend and I were talking about the worst accessories that came with the vintage action figures. And I could have done a show about that, which I probably will. But I wanna start out on a positive note and do the best ones. Because you know, I think that this channel has a more positive vibe. Okay, I know I did the top 10 worst figures in the Kenner line, but that was all done with love. <laughs> and plus, I still have to collect all of them, no matter what they look like. So like I said, let's get to the top 10 best accessories that came with the vintage Star Wars action figures. Number 10, the Gamorrean Guard. I mean, he has an ax. How gangster is that? In a galaxy where knuckleheads are coming at you with blasters and laser sword, these guys are coming at you with huge axes. That's why this gets on the list. Axes in a galaxy far, far away, that's always gonna get my vote. Number nine, the Emperor's Royal Guard. Now, it's not just weapons that we're looking at, but it's how the figure is accessorized. And the Emperor's Royal Guard comes with an awesome soft goods cloak and the shock spear, which makes this figure one of the best looking Kenner vintage figures of all time. Number eight, Bib Fortuna. I'm gonna be honest. This slot was being fought for by Squidhead, and I'll tell you why. Squidhead comes with a gray Bespin blaster a large plastic belt, and a soft goods cape and skirt. Bib comes with a different material coat that is different than any other figure, a chest plate, and a staff that's unique to him. So that's why Bib takes this slot. I am sorry, Squid. Number seven, C-3PO with removable limbs. I used to have this figure when I was a kid and loved it. The playability in the removable limbs makes it awesome, but it's also his accessory that makes him unique among all carded Star Wars action figures. It's only one of two figures whose accessory is meant for another character to use. The other, R2-D2 with his pop-up saber. <laughs> Number six, Princess Leia in Boosh disguise. Not only is this one of the best molded figures from Kenner, making it one of the best looking, but the fact that she comes with removable helmet and a well-designed sight rifle that's unique only for this figure, it's the reason why it's on this list. The only thing that could have been added to send this figure higher on this list is if Kenner would have added the thermal detonator. But you know as kids, we would have lost that as soon as we opened up the package. Number five, Luke Skywalker in his Stormtrooper disguise. It's a Stormtrooper. No, it's Luke come to save the princess. Great playability factor on this figure and a great looking figure as well. With the removable helmet, Black Blaster, this figure didn't come with a ton of accessories, but the ones that did come with it are awesome. John Denver approves. And no, he's not short for a Stormtrooper. Number four, Princess Leia in Combat Poncho. Now, I love this figure for sentimental reasons. It's the last action figure that my mother bought me before she became one with the Force, and my mom had excellent taste. This figure comes with an array of accessories. Her belt, her poncho, her blaster, and the best feature of all, the removable helmet. Not that a huge number of accessories will get you on this list, but the fact that they look great on this figure puts it high on this list. And before we get to the top three figures that have the best accessories, down in my descriptions are links for supplies that you may need for your collecting journey. And when you click and buy using my links, it does support the channel, so thank you for that. And also, join me on all my other social media. The links for those are on the homepage of my YouTube channel. And we finally have our own merch store. So head on down to the descriptions to get your hands on some Padawan collector gear. And yes, there's even some Rami and Jaws gear. So coming up are the top three figures that have the best accessories. Is my list gonna match yours? So let's get to the top three. Number three, Yoda. The Jedi Master gets high on this list, and for good reason. This figure comes with so many cool accessories that are unique to him. From his soft goods cloak, his super detailed belt, his walking cane, and his snake, 
You cannot deny that this is not only a must have in any collection, but one of the coolest looking figures in history. Number two, Luke Skywalker, Jedi Knight. An iconic figure in itself and was the first figure to come with the Black Palace Blaster. Well, it was gray, but it comes with either a blue or a green lightsaber. And if you're a purist from the movie, you want the green though. But the saber was always supposed to be green. But when the effects team at ILM started producing these shots, the blue saber kept on getting lost in the blue sky. So they changed it to green to provide better contrast. And now you know. And knowing is half the battle. And you know that I had to include one special mention. And the special mention is the Max Rebo Band for making love and not war by having musical instruments for accessories and not blasters or spears. And how cool is Max's piano? And the number one action figure accessory. Number one is Han and Carbonite. And I've seen this one make people's top 10 worst accessories before. But as I say, no way. Not on my channel. This one gets the top spot, not only for having a ton of playability with Boba Fett and Slave One inside a Jabba diorama scene or in a Bespin chamber scene, but the accessory itself and the way that it fits with Han is super great. As a kid, I would have kept this on a special place on my shelf for sure. So that is my list. And did I pick the accessories that you would have chosen? Let me know what your top accessories would have been down there in the comments. And today, I actually wanna treat myself and get the number one figure on that list. So I'm gonna get Han Solo in his Carbonite. So we've already gone over the main features of what Han and Carbonite comes with. So let's go over the brief figure history. Han Solo and Carbonite was first released in 1985 on the Power of the Force cardbacks with a coin and the Tri-Logo cardbacks without a coin. And looking at the Star Wars tracker, for a loose complete version of this figure, prices in 2021 averaged from $190 on the low end to $270 on the high end. And in 2022, prices are on the rise with $210 on the low end all the way to almost $300 on the high end. And I found an excellent looking figure on sale on eBay for $260.42 with shipping and tax included, so I picked that up. It came very well packaged, and I've bought from this seller before on eBay, and starting to narrow down who I trust to buy from on eBay, and this is definitely one of those sellers. The figure looks pristine and absolutely no paint loss whatsoever uncracked limbs, and the carbonite block has no stress cracks, no scratches in the plastic, and no chips or wear along the sides. And if I was to send this in for a grade, I would guess it's a strong candidate for a very high grade, at least an 85. So if I ever find a lesser quality Han and Carbonite for a great price, I'll pick that one up for my display and send this figure right here in for a grade. And I also went on the hunt for a coin, and I found one being sold on Facebook, as well as in a Man, -Man coin. And the back of the Han coin reads, Smuggler, captured by the bounty hunter Boba Fett, and frozen because he owed money to the evil Jabba the Hutt. I mean, if Han owes money to an evil gangster, doesn't that make Han kind of evil too? And on the back of the Man, -Man coin, it reads, long-armed creature at Jabba's court called Headhunter because of his staff with three heads. I really do enjoy reading the back of the coins, and I've always wondered, who gets to write those? Maybe I'll explore that in a future episode. So let's do some major crossing off our list. First with the Han Solo and Carbonite, and we got that from an eBay seller for $260.42, and the coin from Facebook for an even $40. And for the Amanda Man coin, we also got that from the same Facebook seller for $30. So let's place the Han and Carbonite in our collector displays case. And let's also place the Amanda Man coin, finally paired with this figure, in the case as well. And our collector display case is looking more and more complete each week. 
So thanks for going on that journey with me to list my top 10 accessories that came with the vintage Star Wars figures. And yes, please let me know what your top 10 would have been down in those comments. And if you found this video interesting, please hit that like button. It does support the channel. And if you want to see more Star Wars collecting content from me, please consider subscribing. Hey Lexi. As well as hitting that notification bell so you can know when videos go live. I post videos every Wednesday and Saturday. And as I mentioned before, I am moving studios, so I may go to Saturday for a little while, but I'll be back on my regular schedule beginning in April. And as always, my friends, thank you, and I will see you next time. If you're new to the channel, check out the welcome video, or just check out the next episode. And please subscribe if you want to follow the journey. And remember, there is no shame in being a Padawan.